So, last class we have discussed that uh, if we have an unconstrained optimization problem is there, we can solve it by using the KKT condition. And we have discussed the KKT, KKT necessary conditions. Okay? So, next is, is a sufficient condition whether that point regular point is a minimum value of the function will give you or the maximum value of the function will give you that will be decided by using the sufficient condition. <coughs> so, let us call that the second order sufficient conditions. KKT. So, suppose that x star is the feasible point, feasible point means the point which is lies in the what is called feasible set and at that point that equality constant and inequality constant must satisfy. So, that is the feasible point. Suppose, x star is a feasible point for the constraints it must satisfy this constraints is equal to 0 and we have a there are p equality constraint as well as it should satisfy the inequality constraints less than equal to 0 for j is equal to 1 to dot dot m this now question is if there is a <coughs> if there exist this is called there exist vector this symbol is there exist a vector lambda star it is a multi lagrange multiplier what is this one lambda 1 star lambda 2 star dot dot lambda p star because there are p equality constants are there if there exist vector whose dimension is p cross 1 and mu whose dimension is m cross 1 is equal to mu 1 star mu 2 star dot dot mu m star. If there exists this and this vector, so that that KKT condition that KKT necessary conditions satisfied. condition satisfied. What is the necessary condition? Gradient of Lagrangian function must be equal to 0. So, what is the gradient of Lagrangian function with respect to x? If you see that L gradient of L with respect to x is nothing but a gradient of f of x this plus summation of i is that is we have shown last class that is equal to lambda i star gradient of h i with respect to x this plus summation of <coughs> that j is equal to 1 to m gradient of this x g j x star this must be equal to 0 whose dimension is n cross 1 whose dimension is n cross 1 okay? the dimension is n cross 1. So, <coughs> and also there are which is called switching function must satisfy mu i mu j g j x star j must be equal to 0 for j is equal to 1 to m and mu j is the Lagrangian multiplier associated with the inequality constraints mu j must be greater than equal to 0 that we have shown last class 1 to dot dot m. <coughs> so, this is less than equal to less than uh, my greater than equal to 0 when the constant will be this type, this type of constant, constants 
or less than equal to 0, then this will be greater than equal to 0. Agree? Non negative num, non negative mu is non negative that we will see later in your discussions. So, this is the thing R satisfy and for any vector for any you see this this so that the necessary conditions are satisfied this condition and for any vector z any non zero vector rather you write it non zero vector any non zero vector z whose dimension is n cross 1 satisfies satisfying the following conditions what is this following conditions the gradient of g j of x star with respect to x this multiplied by z transpose okay this must be equal to <coughs> 0 and mu j star equal to greater than 0 this greater than 0 for all active inequality constants for all active for all active inequality constants constraints for all active equality constants means at if x star is a u regular point then at that point that that inequality constant if it is a at that point g j of x is equal to 0 at x is equal to x star where x star is the regular point then it is called the active constants okay because i, I mentioned it we have a inequality constant is small m out of small m if at regular point if it is um, small l is the number of equality constants satisfied and remaining small m minus l is the satisfy the that inequality conditions i is equal to 1 to j is equal to 1 to dot dot l and j of x star is less than equal to 0 for j is equal to 1 to dot 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 m minus l constants these are called active equality constants and these are called the inactive equality constants this so this condition must be there naturally when <coughs> this is greater than 0 then g of uh, j is the your active constants and gradient of that at that point x star gradient of that point with any vector if you multiplied by this transpose of this one this must be equal to 0 because that are one is tangent another is perpendicular to that one. So, this is a orthogonality condition this must satisfy next is z transpose gradient of x g j of x star is less than equal to 0 when mu j and mu j star equal to 0. So, this constant when mu j g j is inactive constants okay, at that condition this this quantity will be less than equal to 0 and next is similarly in equality constants that with h z transpose gradient of x with h i of x star is equal to 0 for all constants this is for all constants h i x star is equal to 0. This is the all constants for active inequality means when g j of this is 0 this condition. This is for inactive constraints this that means, if you have a let us call constant this is one constant is there g 1 of x this constant and another constant is like 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 this way g 2 of x agree okay. at this point the function value is 0. Now, what you find out the gradient of at this point 
of because these equality constants are satisfied at this point you will find out the gradient that means you draw the tangent corresponding to this curve here and perpendicular to this one is the gradient of g 2 of x this is and here corresponding to this curve draw a tangent and perpendicular to this one is the gradient of g 1 of x star. So, that direction z tangent of this one is z, z transform of this must be this equal to 0 that that one. <coughs> Similarly, h case also you can show it. So, this is all constraint for i is equal to 1 to dot dot p. So, this, this is a satisfy then this point will that point x star will be a then point x star will be a what is called negative that if the following constraints because we are finding out the sufficient conditions if the following constraints is true that means z transpose z is any vector is that second partial derivation of derivative of f of x at x is equal to x star this plus summation of i is equal to 1 to p this is nothing but a just like a unconstant optimization we have done the second derivative of the function that is hessian mat matrix must be positive definite for minimum value of the function hessian matrix must be negative definite for maximum value of the function similarly this our now the function is unconstant function is lagrangian function the lagrangian function similarly second derivative of this one with respect to x what we are getting it is that lambda i star gradient of x h of i of x plus summation of j is equal to 1 to m mu j star gradient of x square g j of x star into z greater than 0 greater than 0 means it should be a positive definite this indicates this matrix this is a matrix of dimension n cross n this is a symmetric matrix matrix of dimension n cross n and this quantity will be positive definite provided this matrix is positive definite. So, our condition is this must be in order to get in order to x is equal to x star should be a minimum point agree then this must be a positive definite matrix f of x star plus summation of j i is equal to 1 to p lambda i star gradient of this not gradient second derivative of this hessian matrix of h agree. So, this is a star this plus summation of j is equal to 1 to m mu j star g j of x star this matrix must be greater than 0 means it should be positive definite. Then we will call x is equal to x star will give you the minimum value of the function agree and that point is a isolated point that point is a isolated isolated point optimum point. Isolated point means near around this point there is no other minimum value of the functions agree. So, this is a you can say isolated point means there is no other around this point will have a minimum value of the function. So, this is the isolated point of this function. So, how to calculate this this one you know this that is if you write more clearly that <coughs> or isolated point means there is no other local minimum point in the neighborhood of x star agree the isolated point once again I remain isolated point is means that there is no other local minimum point around 
x star around that x star. So, let us see how to calculate this one x star that is Hessian matrix of f f of x at x is equal to x star. How will you calculate this? If you recollect this one it is nothing but a delta square of f of x del x 1 del x 2 sorry del x square del square of f x then del x 1 del x 2 and since we have a n variables are there we have a n variables are there then we will take del square of f x plus del x 1 del x n and similarly you can write it that del s del of x square del x 1 del x 2 and del s f of x del x 2 square and in this way del square of f x del x of 2 del x n and if you continue like this way last term will be del f of x square del x 1 del x n then del x square f and del x 2 del x n and last term is your del f square x del x n square. So, put these values at x is equal to x star. So, you have computed and similarly if you see this one del x that is Hessian matrix of h 1 it varies from i is equal to p h 1 you will again you will get a, a matrix you will get a matrix of dimension c with respect to a of dimension n cross n. So, this dimension is n cross n. Again, <coughs> so, similarly I am not writing this one del square f h i of x you can get it in similar way. Only you can say f will be replaced by h i this f will be replaced by h i function then you can write it this is also n cross n and you have to put the value x is equal to x star agree. So, I have just write it first for you that h i of x del x 1 square h del i of x then del x 1 del x 2 and in this way del square i of x del x 1 del x n and in this way last is del square i of x del x 1 del x n and if you do this one last one is del square i of x del x n square. So, okay. this is the second part of this sufficient conditions we have written all i v. Now, here we have to write it if you see this one here you have to write it i varies from 1 to dot dot p. Similarly, you can write it delta x that g j of x. So, I will not repeat only in place of f you replace by g j and that is also n by n matrix put the value x is equal to x star and it is also symmetric matrix. Once you do this one next is you have to check this this matrices you know this matrices you know this matrices you know add all this together you will result in you will get another matrix. So, you will see whether that matrix is positive definite or not and you know how to test the positive definite matrix or not by Sylvester equality constraint equality conditions or you can find out if a matrix is positive definite matrix then you find out its eigen values of this matrix if all the eigen values are positive then it is a positive definite matrix. If the all the eigen values are negative then it is a negative definite matrix. Similarly, positive definite matrix if that matrix you find out the eigen values of this matrix if some of the eigen values are positive some are negative uh, what is 0 then it is a positive semi definite matrix. Similarly, positive negative semi definite, definite matrix case also you will get some of the eigen values are negative and some of the eigen values are 0 at least one will be 0. So, once you know all this one then I can find out the 
second order sufficient conditions. Again, if this this matrix is positively definite, we will call it is a what is called that function will give you the minimum value of the function and x star is the isolated point. Isolated point means this that the function does not have any other local minimum point around that x star. So, let us now solve a problem then how to work out these problems using the our technique that what is called constant optimization problem how to find out. So, our problem is minimize example minimize f of x is equal to x 1 square plus x 2 square minus 4 x 1 minus 6 x 2 subject to subject to constraints x 1 plus x 2 is equal to 2, 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 is less than equal to 12 and we are assuming that our side constraint x is greater than 0 and x 2 is greater than 0. This. So, this problem you have to solve it by using using KKT KKT conditions that is our problem. So, what is our job? This is our equality constraints is there and inequality constraints both are let us call both are inequality constraints again this this is our inequality constraint this are so we do not have any equality constraints. So, in that case h i of x is equal to 0 that lambda is associated with the equality constant. So, Lagrange multiplier lambda i will not be there in our solution. Okay. So, let us say first you write it the solution of the problems. So, let us call first we write it the necessary conditions Okay. So, first we write the Lagrangian function that function f of x plus summation of there is no h equality constant. So, that term will not come into the picture there is a inequality constant j is equal to 1 to m in our case m is equal to 2 there are two inequality constants if you see here this and this. So, 2 then mu j mu j then our inequality constant we have converted into a equality constant that is you have to see g j of x plus s j square this one. So, now I use the necessary conditions for this one. So, I will find out del l del x 1 is what is equal to 0 because <coughs> So, what is this one f of x you see f of x is that one. So, you differentiate with respect to x 1. So, it will be 2 x 1 minus 4. So, it will be a 2 x 1 minus 4 and we have a also if you see this this one or ok I write it then it will be clear instead of calling this one. What is f of x? It is a x 1 square plus x 2 square minus 4 x 1 minus 6 x 2 plus mu 1 g 1 of x g 1 of x is equal to what you see g 1 of x is equal to x 1 plus g 1 of x is equal to you see if you call this is g 1 of x x 1 minus x. So, I can write it this if you see this one I can write it this g 1 of x g 1 of x is equal to x 1 plus x 2 minus 2 less than equal to 0. So, this is our standard form we have written. Similarly, this is also we can write g 2 of x we can write it ok write, write it this one g 2 of x is equal to g 2 of x we can write it is equal to 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus 12 is less than equal. So, we have written our standard form type less than equal to form. So, our g 2 1 g 1 of x if you see x 1 plus x 2 
minus 2 and we are adding with a some positive quantity. So, that it will turns out to be a equality constant plus mu 2 then 2 x 1 that g 2 g 2 is your 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus 12 plus s 2 square. Agree? Now, I am differentiating this with respect to x 1. So, it will be a 2 x 1 4 x then here is x 1 is there mu 1 and no other x is here here again is there there is 2 mu 2. So, this equal to 0. Okay. This is one equation again you have to differentiate with respect to x 2. So, if you differentiate with x 2 this is 2 x 2 minus 6 then it is a plus mu 1 then plus 3 mu 2 because I am differentiated with respect to x 2 mu 2 agree then this is 0 with respect to this with respect to x 2. So, this is zeros. then this this is the one equation let us call this is equation number 1 this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2 agree and we have a in fact we have to differentiate l with respect to there is no h. So, we need not to differentiate with respect to lambda. So, we have to differentiate with respect to our mu and another thing l we have to differentiate with respect to s. We have shown it that these two conditions can be combined together and finally, we can write it that condition is mu i g j of x is equal to 0 and our case j is equal to 1 and 2. Okay. So, what is this condition? We will write it mu 1 g 1 of x must be 0. Another condition is that mu 2 g 2 is 0. So, we have a you have to solve these two equation. We have a how many unknowns are there x 1 x 2 mu 1 mu 2 and we have a four unknowns two equation and from there we have to see how to solve it. Look at this one that there is this has a two possibilities to satisfy this condition. One condition is mu 1 if it is a mu 1 is 0 and mu uh, what is called g 1 is not equal to 0. Another choice is g 1 is 0, but mu 1 is not equal to 0. Okay. When mu 1 is not is equal to 0, g 1 is not equal to mu 1 is equal to 0 case mu 1 is equal to 0, g 1 is not equal to 0 that means, it is a inactive conditions. When mu is, uh, g 1 is 0, but mu 1 is not equal to 0, but this condition is satisfied in that situation it is called active condition is satisfied. Similarly, you have this in general if you have a m small m number of inequality constant we have a 2 to the power of m possibilities are there to satisfy this equation. Okay. 2 to the power of m possibilities are there when switching we can switching 2 to the power of m switching is possible to satisfy this equation when that uh, we have a j is a j is equal to 1 to m that means m constants are there. So, in short you if we have a m constants are the inequality constants are there then we have a such type of equation we have m equations are there which in turn we have a 2 to the power of m switching conditions are there to satisfy these equations. So, let us solve for this case. So, our first case we are considering that case 1 mu 2 is let us call 0. If mu 2 is 0 then g 2 cannot be 0. Agree? So, g 2 is our condition is g 2 is less than equal to 0. So, equal to cannot be. So, it is a this. So, it is a inactive conditions. The condition is more relaxed when it will g 2 is a is equal to 0 it is a active condition that means, it is a more tightened conditions that means, it should be on the curve or the on the line if it is g x is a straight line then it is should be on the line only 
when g x is a active condition 0. So, we have a this one condition mu is 0, then we can get that g 1 is 0, g 1 of x, g 1 is equal to 0, but if g 1 is 0, mu 1 is greater than 0, both cannot be 0, mu 1, g 1, mu 1 is equal to 0, if this is 0, it is enough to satisfy that condition. So, in this case, that means mu is 0, g 1 is 0. Agree? In this in this case, what is this situation we will see from 1 and 2. So, from 1 and 2 equation, I will put our if you see mu 2 is 0, mu 2 is 0 and there is a constraint are there g 1 is 0. So, we will put mu 2 is 0 from 1 and 2, then we will get it 2 x 1 minus 4 plus mu 1 is equal to 0. Another equation will get 2 x 2 minus 6 plus mu 1 is equal to 0. This is and we have a g 1 is 0, g 1 is what x 1 plus x 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. So, we have a three unknowns are there, we have to solve this three equation solve by solving solving this equation. we get we obtain x 1 is equal to half or is equal to 0.5 x 2 is equal to 3 by 2 is equal to 1.5 and mu mu 1 we got it 3 and mu 1 must be I told you when it is a g 1 is active constant mu 1 must be positive non negative number. If it you, you get it by solving this one negative, that means it does not give any solution for to become a what is called optimal value of the function. So, this must be this is 3 means greater than 0 and mu 2 is equal to 0. Okay, this we got it. Now, we have to see whatever the, this point is it must satisfy all feasible conditions, I mean all inequality conditions. Okay and equality conditions if it is satisfied then we will call the point is in the inside the feasible space or feasible set or feasible region. So, let us say feasibility check. So, our g 2 we have to check it now g 2 of x if you say g 2 of x is what twice x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus 12. If you see the g 2 of x ever expression and this we have to show it, it is our condition must satisfy, our condition is less than equal to 0. So, this condition if you put the value of x 1 is equal to half, value of x 2 is equal to 3 by 2, then what will get it that one will get what is called uh, this is half, half means this is 1 and this is 3 by 2, 3 by 2 means uh, this is a 9 by 2 means 4.5 minus 12 and that is less than 0, that means 5.5 minus 12 is less than 0. So, this satisfy this condition. So, this point may be one of the so, uh, what is called um, point which will give may give the youth minimum value of the functions. Agree? So, that we have to check it next. So, how will you check it that 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 one? So, this is this satisfy all what is called constant equation at this experiment that x 1 is half and 3 by 2 is satisfy all constants. Agree? So, we can see this is the solution the solution Agree? that means x 1 is equal x 1 star is equal to half x 2 star is equal to 3 by 2 is the solution. Okay. Now, <coughs> here also you can check it whether it is a minimum value of the function or maximum value of function without checking the sufficient sufficiency conditions and that condition we will call that how to check that one let us see. So, let us call f function at x is equal to 
x 1 is equal to x 1 star and x 2 is equal to x 2 star. Agree? This value is I know x x 1 plus x 2 um, minus 4 x 1 minus 6 x 2 put the value x 1 is equal to half uh, half and x 2 is equal to what is x 2 star is equal to 3 by 2. If you put this value of this one, you will get this value is 8.5 this. So, <coughs> this you got, got it. Now, how you say this is the you got the value of the function at that point, but how you ensure that this will give you the minimum value of the function. One can check this thing by using the monotonicity analysis that is monotony city analysis. What is this? I also we have discussed you earlier that at this point you give a small perturbations. If it is a minimum value and you give a perturbation around this point, the function value if it is a increase, increase then it indicates we have reached the minimum value. Okay. So, this is called the monotonicity analysis. So, what is this? Let us call we put the value of the function x is equal to this at x 1 is equal to let us call we have found this value at x 1 is 1.495 instead of instead of what is called that finding out the x 1 is not this is x 2 is 1.1 instead of 1.5 I am writing 1.495 x 2. That means, what is the change I made it 0 0.005 and x 1 I made it let us call 0 0.505, 0 0.005 added and from 0 0.05 is part of it from this one. And if you put this value at this one, you will get that value is 4.8.4. 995. That means, function value is increased from minus 8.5, it is a minus 4.5, it increased. If you see in the dimension x 1 and x 2 dimension, x 1 and x 2 dimension, if it is 8.5, agree? this is corresponding to 8.5, this is 8.5, agree? then this is 8.49. 5 agree that means this function value is <coughs> increased from here to here so this indicates this is what is called give a minimum value of the function also we will check through what is called necessary uh, sufficient condition of kkd condition so case 2 may be case 2 case 1 you see we have made it case 1 mu 2 is 0 i will make it mu 2 is 0 now, there is another possibility is there that mu 2, mu 1 also 0. So, our case keeping mu 2 0 same that means, g 2 of x is less than 0 and we are making, making that mu 1 is 0 that means, g 1 of x is less than 0 this. So, again from 1 and 2, again from 1 and 2 we can write it twice x I will put the value of mu 1 and mu 2 in that equation 1 and 2 equation. So, I will get twice x is equal to 4. So, x 1 is equal to 2. So, twice x is equal to 6 x 2 is equal to 3. So, I have to check this value I got it. So, I have to check the feasibility conditions and mu 1 mu 2 is 0 feasibility conditions. Okay. I have to check the feasibility condition. What is the feasibility condition? G 2 of x, I have to find out G 2 of x, I have to find out at x 1 is equal to 2, x 2 is equal to 3. Agree? Let us see this one. What is G 2 of x? If you see this one, x 2 minus x 2 plus 3 x, sorry, x 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus 12. Agree? So, this is our g 2 of x put this value x 1 is equal to 2 x 2 is equal to 3 and you will get this value is 13 minus 12 which is 
not equal to not equal to which is less than is not less than 0 this indicate not less than 0 this is means this is equal to 1. So, it does not satisfy this one that means, we have a point 2 and 3 this is outside the feasible region okay, feasible space. Similarly, one is enough to check that means, this is not the acceptable solution here. So, you can also check g 1 of x at x 1 is equal to 2 x 2 is equal to 3 and in this way g 1 of x you know x 1 plus x 2 minus 2 put the value of x 1 is 2 x 2 is equal to 3. So, x 1 is a 5. So, it is a 5 minus 2 which is not less than 0 which is not less than 0. Okay. So, <coughs> so, this two condition g 1 d. So, our conclusion is that g 1 and g 2 the g 1 of x and g 2 of x at x 1 is equal to 2 x 2 is equal to 3 violates the conditions. So, our conclusion then this is not the our our condition that this indicates this implies the x 1 is 2 x 2 is 3 is not does not belong to feasible space this does not belong to a feasible space or design space. Okay. So, this this case 2 will not be acceptable that way case 3 on the other words is not feasible space there is no solution at that point. So, case 3 now I made mu 2 is 0 agree then this another possibility is you make it mu 1 is 0 is mu 1 you know g 1 of x is less than 0 then you have a g 2 of x g 2 of x is equal to 0 that means mu 2 greater than 0 agree. So, this <coughs> greater than equal to 0 this. So, let us see this this one mu 1 is 0. So, from equation 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 I will put mu, mu 1 is 0 in this way. Okay. So, I will get it once again if you see I will get twice x 1 minus 4 plus mu 1 is 0. So, twice mu 2 is equal to 0 from equation 1 I will get this one putting mu 1 is 0 from equation 2 2 x 2 minus 6 plus 3 mu 2 is equal to 0 I will got it and we have a g 2 is 0 g 2 is what if you see g 2 our 2 x 2 sorry 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus 12 agree g 2 is 0 this one that may active constant this one this. So, solving we have a 1 2 three unknowns are the three equations are solving this solving we get we get x 1 is equal to x 1 is equal to 1.846 x 2 is equal to 2.769 and mu 1 you have considered is 0 and mu 2 is and mu 2 we are getting is 0 0.31 which is greater than 0. Agree? So, this satisfy all the conditions. Agree? So, this may be a one of the possible solution to get the minimum value of the function, but first still we have to check it either what is called monotonicity analysis or using the what is called by KKT second, uh, KKT second order conditions. So, let us check the feasibility conditions. Our feasibility condition is this condition must be satisfied g 1 is less than 0 this must be can satisfy. So, our feasibility conditions if you see this one the our feasible condition g 1 of <coughs> g 1 of x 
what is g 1 x 1 plus x 2 minus g 1 x is minus 2 I think. So, put the value x 1 is equal to that we got it x 1 value is how much we got it x 1 we got it if you see this x 1 is 1.846 x 2 is equal to 2.769. So, if you put this one g 1 is you see it does not satisfy. So, it is a 1.846 plus 2.769 minus 2 which is greater than 0 agree which is greater than 0. So, it does not satisfy the our monotonicity analysis you know, what is does not satisfy our constraints this must be less than 0. So, this cannot be a once again this cannot be a g 1 of x violates the conditions. So, the point the point x 1 is equal to 1.846 and x 2 is equal to 2.769 cannot be a, a solution of our optimization problem, because it does not belongs to in feasible region feasible space. This point is not is not belongs to feasible space. So, reject that solution. Okay. <coughs> so, you see this one our case 3 what we made it your case 3. case 3 is that, that that one we made it that g 1 is 0 natural g 1 into g 2 must be 0. So, this this will be less than 0. So, this equation g <coughs> is coming from equation number 2 and 3 putting mu 1 is 0 this then I have g 2 is 0 this. So, solving this equation I got this. So, it must satisfy this equation and when you are putting this equation we got it that one is it does not satisfy this one. Now, case 4 what is the choice is left now that g 1 is 0 mu 1 I made it 0 g 1 of is g 1 is equal to 0 which means mu 1 is greater than 0 and next choice is left g 2 is 0 that means mu 2 is greater than 0. Agree? So, let us say using this equation in from 1 and 2 from 1 and 2 what we will get it 2 x 1 minus 4 plus mu 1 plus twice mu 2 is equal to 0. This I am getting from equation 1 agree and then from equation 2 I am getting is 2 x 2 minus 6 plus mu 1 plus 3 mu 2 is equal to 0. So, this is you are getting from equation 2 this one. Now, <coughs> so this we have a how many a variables are there x 1 x 2 then your x 1 x 2 mu 1 mu 2. So, you have a four variables are there agree. So, now use these conditions because this is the we consider g 1 is 0 g 1 of this 0 means g 1 is what x 1 plus x 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. Agree? So, this and g 2 is 0 means that is 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus 12 is equal to 0. So, we have a 4 equations are there 4 unknowns are there mu 1 mu 2 mu 3 mu 4 x 1 x 2 mu 1 mu 2. So, solving this equation solving solving the above equation equation we get agree okay. solving the above equation what we will get
or you see this one, either this you can first you solve this and this. This is a variable of two variables are g 1 x this, you have a two variables two equations. So, I can solve this or you can write it solving 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 we get solving this equations this equations we get x 1 is equal to minus 6 and x 2 is equal to 8 agree and it does not satisfy our what is called our side constraints we have put it x 1 is greater than equal to 0 x 2 is greater than 0 so let us call and solving the other two equation other solving solving the other two equation other other two equations agree solving other two equations or you just write it solving other two equations we get mu 1 is equal to 68 and mu 2 is equal to minus 26, which is not greater than 0, which is not greater than 0. So, it also violates our what is called Lagrange multiplier conditions. There are side constraints are violated and our what is called that Lagrange multiplier for inequality constraints that should be positive, but it is become negative. So, mu 2 violates the conditions. So, no solution at this point. Point what is this point? x 1 is equal to we got it x 1 is equal to minus 6 x 2 is equal to 8. Not only this you can stop it here, because this does not satisfy our side constraints. So, now if you see out of the four cases now in short if you have a n sorry if you have a m small m inequality constant you will you have to solve the 2 to the power of m cases for considering the switching possibilities cases. Out of this you have to search on which one will give you the feasible design space or feasible solution and at that point whether it is a minimum or maximum one can ch check by monotonicity analysis or you can check by considering the second order, order KKD conditions. Condition. So, if you see that second order con conditions, so our acceptable our acceptable things is check our acceptable x 1 is equal to 0 0.5 and x 2 is equal to 1.5 star agree this. So, you have to check the KKT conditions second KKT conditions what is the second order critical conditions f of x this f of x plus summation of j is equal to 1 to 2 mu j mu j del f uh, del x g j of x star x this star agree. So, this you have to go because we do not have any equality constraints. So, these two things you have to find out. So, let us call what is f of x is our x 1 square plus x 2 square minus 4 x 1 minus 6 x 2 and what is g 1 of x is equal to x 1 plus x 2 minus 2 g 2 of x is equal to 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 minus 6. So, find out the this the this of this at x 1 is equal to x 1 is equal to 0.5 x 2 is equal to 1.5 agree and this will come if you do this one it will come 0 0 to 0 and this second derivative uh, uh, second derivative of g 1 of 
g 1 of x star with respect to x you will get a null matrix agree and similarly g x of g 2 of x you will get a null matrix. So, add these matrices add these matrices and ultimately you will get this one. So, this is is positive definite matrix. So, 2 0 0 2 is a this matrix is a positive definite matrix by using finger stable. So, our conclusion is we will get the optimum value means minimum value of the function at this point and corresponding mu is what if you see that corresponding mu of that one is uh, that mu you just say that mu you got it positive quantity if you recollect this one mu 1 is equal to what and mu 2 is equal to what you will see is a positive quantity. So, we will stop it here next class we will discuss some of the issues related with the what is called parameter variation in the objective functions effect of parameter variation in the objective function. Thank you.